Good evening, everyone. Uh, let's look at Luke chapter 16. <laughs> Can we get him a microphone, please? Thank you. Uh, we'll look at Luke chapter 16 from verse 19 through 31. Uh, Luke chapter 16 from verse 19. It says, uh, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in hell. Where he was torment, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, send Lazarus to dip tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us, and you is a great chasm has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot nor can anyone cross over from there to us he answered then i beg you father send lazarus to my father's house for i have five brothers let him warn them so they will not also come to this place of torment abraham replied they have moses and the prophets let them listen to them no father abraham he said but if someone from the dead goes to them they will repent he said to them then i don't listen to moses or the prophets they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. And the title of today's message is uh, The Rich Man and Lazarus. So today's message uh, is about two people who died, a rich man and a poor man, Lazarus. Um, it's not clear if Jesus is giving a parable, uh, or it's possible that Jesus is actually telling about two real people and what happened to them. And uh, it's an important message uh, because it's one of the few where Jesus talks about life after this world. And even though eternity is not something we can fully grasp, but I do think that these messages help. As most of you know, uh, last Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. And so uh, this signifies the 40-day walk to Easter, right? And during these 40 days, uh, it's a time where Christians should become more earnest and more sincere about their faith. And so, uh, through today's message, uh, as we look at eternity and afterlife, uh, I hope that we can become uh, more earnest and more sincere in our faith. So, let's look at it one by one. Uh, from verse 19 through 23, once again. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. 
At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sore. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in hell, where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So, uh, these passages describe uh, a rich man in fine, nice clothes. Uh, he ate well and lived in luxury all his life. Uh, he lived in luxury all his life. And then we see a poor man, Lazarus, uh, that lived in destitute. Even uh, among the animals, they licked, the dogs licked his sores. He also was always very hungry. That he, if the crumbs fell from the rich man's table, uh, he just wanted, even if he could eat those crumbs, he wanted those crumbs. He was that hungry. But Jesus says the rich man sitting high up on that table uh, went down to hell and the poor man, Lazarus, who sat at the foot of the table for the crumbs, uh, he went up to heaven. Right? So you know, you look at this message and you think, is Jesus trying to say, you know, rich people go to hell and poor people go to heaven? Is this what Jesus is trying to say? Of course not. I, I don't think that the standard of heaven and hell is, you know, of course, so simple in that way, right? So, what is the standard for heaven and hell then? Uh, Jesus is trying to describe here is he is talking about perspective. Uh, on earth, uh, you have the rich man sitting nicely at the table. Looking down at the poor man on earth. And on earth, the poor man looked up. You know, it's true when you really think about it. Rich and poor people have a, a completely different perspective on life. In other words, they have a completely different worldview. Uh, you know, if I go back to uh, Taiwan, you know, my mother and father's country, uh, I, if I get off, uh, there's, a, there's a stop I get off at, to, I'm sorry, to get onto the bus, and then uh, take this bus to my aunt's house. Uh, my, my, yeah, my aunt's house. And my aunt, uh, she always says, you know, this uh, elementary school is where your dad went to school. And they say, we were so poor. Seven people with parents, that's nine people total. So, uh, nine people living in a two-bedroom apartment. And there was never enough food for them to eat. So, you know, if they sat around the table and there was just this food, uh, everyone tried to grab the food as quick as possible. So they would get enough to eat. 
You know, my dad, he wore very, you know, shabby clothes to school. And when it got、uh, too cold during the winter,、uh, the other kids,、uh, of course, had a nice jacket, you know, to wear during the cold.、Uh, but my dad didn't have one. But maybe he was popular. So, you know, the students actually seeing him dressed like that. You know, they they took money, gathered it together, <laughs> and bought him a jacket. And other kids doing it for him like that. You know, my dad was very smart. So you know, of course, he went to a nice school, went to, came and studied to the U.S. <laughs> so you know, I came eventually. <laughs> And、uh, I grew up in、uh, Cupertino. Do you know where Cupertino is?、Uh, it's an hour south of here. It's the headquarters of Apple Computers.、Uh, I lived in a nice house. I had my own room.、Uh, it was just me and my brother, right? So you know, there was plenty of food on the table. Uh, you know, my, my brother, brother and I never, you know, tried to grab food before the other. And、uh, you know, my mom, my parents, they took care of us. We had enough clothes, had enough food. So you know, if I go back to Taiwan, you know, I think my world view is so completely different than my parents' world view. You know, it's true. How you are, your situation, is definitely going to affect how you view this world and your life. Uh, I tell you, this is a, a for sure thing. This is what Jesus is talking about here in the rich man and Lazarus. It's a, it's a for sure thing how you view the world. Uh, there's another parable that that comes a couple chapters later.、Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the key verse.、Uh, we'll look at、uh, Luke chapter 18, verse、uh, 25.、Uh, indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So, you know, big old camel going through the eye of a needle. It's easier than a rich man going to heaven. Why? You know, you look at this question that initially started this conversation. It's very interesting.、Uh, in verse eighteen, in Luke, Luke eighteen eighteen, it says, "A certain ruler asked him." Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So, you know, from this question, we can see a certain world view that this rich man has on life. And because he has a, a view on life, he has a view on eternity as well. Also, he thinks eternity is something to be earned. Just like he earned his wealth and his social standing, so too eternity is to be earned. Lord, what commandments should I follow? What actions of faith should I earn and do in order to go to eternal life in heaven? And then, as the conversation continues,、uh, Jesus also points out, you know, this other view that this this man has. He says, "Give up your possessions. 
Why? It's because this rich man has a, has a view of eternity. That eternity is about keeping something, that we should hold on and keep something. You know, essentially, the rich man's worldview is that eternity is about keeping something forever, namely the rich and luxurious life that he had on earth. Now, he views eternity as a really, really long, infinite, infinite amount of time. You know, have you ever thought like that? Oh, eternity is like the longest possible, possible time I,、uh, I can think of. So, so, so think about a rich man. Oh, I can keep everything I have forever like that. You know, really, when you think about this, it's hidden greed at its most depraved. You know, a desire to to want something forever. This is what the rich man thinks about eternity. What about the poor man? He doesn't view eternal life about keeping riches. Because there's no riches for, you know, there's no riches for him to keep, and he's never thought about riches like that. Because, you know, when you look at the biblical worldview on eternity, eternity is not based on time at all. I mean, to be clear, it's not based on this whole concept of lot or infinite amount of time. You know, rather, we look at the Bible looks at eternity as all of time. You can say above time, or beyond time, even.、Uh, Revelations、uh, chapter twenty-two. It's the very end of the Bible. Revelations twenty-two. In verse、uh, 13, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He says it's God, God who is eternal. He says I'm the Alpha, the Omega. You know, He's at the beginning. He's there at the end. He's There we say God is through all of time. He's above time. He's beyond time. So you know us who live kind of in time, kind of locked by time.、Uh, eternity is something completely beyond that we cannot comprehend at all. So you know what does this poor man have inside of him, looking up? He has a longing for this kind of eternity. Yeah, different from the the rich man's eternity. Lazarus longs for something above him. Something sitting at the the bottom of that table that's out of reach for him. And. Eternity that is on a completely different level that that he can think of and that he can even comprehend. And most importantly, the poor man he looks up and he longs for that grace of God from above because he is completely powerless where he is. How 
how can we receive eternal life? How can we be with the eternal God in heaven? We are depraved sinners, powerless on our own. We can only be saved by the love of Jesus Christ and the grace that comes from comes from above, beyond us. And when you really look at it, that, that is the key difference between the perspective of the rich man and the perspective of the poor man. This is something we really need to see in our life and in our faith and be sincere about. Receiving eternity in heaven that is beyond imagination and only possible through Jesus Christ. And we can see that as we look at today's message. And let's continue on. Let's look at the next verses from verse uh, Luke chapter 16 and verse 24 and 25. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and pull my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. You know, very interestingly, the tongue is in agony. And he says, Lazarus, please cool my tongue. And how does Abraham respond to that? He explains, you received good things in your life, while the poor man received bad things. Now you think about this, you know, why? Why in hell is the tongue in agony? Why does Abraham respond talking about his wealth that he received in his life. Uh, to explain this, let's first of all think about the tongue. In the Bible, the tongue has a close connection between physical and spiritual. We know this, uh, right? The Holy Spirit came down upon the disciples and they began to speak in tongues. There's a close, close connection. I mean, Jesus says what's inside of the heart, what's spiritual, is spoken out with the tongue. Faith comes from the heart and spoken with the mouth. And then, even to receive faith, someone needs to, to speak the word of God to you. The Bible talks about this. So, you know, really think about it. The spiritual and physical have a, have a close connection there at the tongue. We have our precious translator during Chinese, during this service. <laughs> you know, people, they used to, because English was, was a bit difficult, they said, you know, I, I understand about 50% of your sermon. <laughs> uh, I thought about it. If they're understanding 50% of it, then you're, you're probably not understanding any of it because you're only catching a, a little bit here and there. And so, uh, you know, the atmosphere during service was difficult preaching sometimes. And we started translation. Oh, the people started opening their eyes, <laughs> understanding more. Oh, hearing the word in your own tongue is important, you know, thinking about it. So, you know, the physical and the spiritual connected at the tongue. And then Abraham responds, you received good things in your life and Lazarus bad things. Uh, 
You know, let me tell you something about uh, the rich person's view on this. Uh, the rich person, he thinks, I have great, spirit, uh, great physical blessing. Uh, I'm doing well, I'm blessed, I'm successful in this world. That means there must be something also good about me on the inside. Uh, the good things that are happening to me on the outside, it signifies that I'm blessed somehow spiritually on the inside. In modern Christian terms, this is called prosperity gospel. You're basically, focusing on material wealth and saying the physical blessing is a, is a sign, is evidence that something good spiritually is going on on the inside. And on the, f- the, the, the flip side to that is, if you're poor, then you're probably cursed. There's probably something wrong with you spiritually. This is, this is, this is how people think. You know, this is probably how some of us think as well also. But, you know, we, you know, really sitting down and thinking about faith, this is, of course, a wrong and invasive teaching in Christianity, prosperity gospel. You know, of course, spiritual leads the physical. And that's the proper order. You know, the rich man's tongue is in agony in hell. Because on earth, his tongue was not used properly. You know, what is it that we do with our tongue in faith? We repent of our sins with our tongue. We confess our complete helplessness in our, in, 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 in our depraved situation. And then with our tongues, we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And then from that, with our tongues, we also proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the lost souls in the world. But think about this. If you're materially blessed, physically and materially blessed, and you think that because of that I'm also spiritually blessed, what do I need to repent about? Or testify about Jesus Christ? Or what do I... What do I need to have faith in God at all about? You know, all this success and all, that's, that's already a sign that I'm blessed. Uh, the rich man's tongue was on fire in hell because he didn't do the things that he should do in faith while he was on this earth. Repenting of his sin, testifying Jesus Christ as Lord, having faith and, and, and testifying his name to all the earth. All these things, it's, once you die, it's, it's too late. Uh, Jesus says as much in this uh, final verses, final set of verses we're going to read. Uh, in uh, verse 26 through 31. And besides all this, between us and you is a great chasm. A great chasm has been fixed, and so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us, he answered. Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. 
Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. So, you know what the Bible is talking about here? Jesus is talking about the complete finality of death. He describes it as a, as a big chasm uh, between heaven and hell. And, uh, you know, he says that people in hell you know, cannot go to heaven and vice versa. So, you know, it's not like in hell you can repent and then somehow go to heaven. It's not like that. This is what it's talking about. And you know, what? And, and when Jesus really talks about, and he says it's an impassable chasm, it signifies to me that really heaven and hell are fundamentally different. You know, fun, you know, I mean, fundamentally, conceptually, and fundamentally different places. I don't remember we talked about this at the first part of this message. Uh, eternity is beyond time. You know, when I think about heaven and hell, I think about that as well also. It's a beyond physical place and physical difference. Fundamentally and completely different. So often we think, you know, maybe drawings or imagination. Heaven is up there in a nice place and free and... Everything's nice and lots of good food and smells good. And it's really nice. Oh, hell. Some fires. Oh, pain all the time, something like this. But, you know, here, when I think about this, it's fundamentally different. And how are they different? Of course, it's not something I can really explain to you because it's beyond thinking. But, you know, in these passages, we can kind of get a, get a hint of the differences. So how is hell? Here's a few things about hell we can tell. First of all, the rich man in hell, he could see people in heaven. There's Abraham and Lazarus. In heaven, isn't, isn't that interesting? In hell, you can see people in heaven. And he cried out to Abraham. Secondly, in hell, he could remember everything on earth. Oh, he remembers that he was rich and he had things. He remembers about his life. The third, in hell, he has a, a very deep desire to warn his loved ones on earth. He begs for Lazarus to please come down and warn my five brothers not to, 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 to repent and not be in this place that I'm in. It's not like he's like sitting in this, you know, jail of a prison. And thinking, at least if I'm in hell, I can have a good lo a loved one together with me in hell. Oh, he, there's no question. He begs, you know, please don't have my loved one be in this place either. You know, when I think about these things, you know, it strikes me 
how much and in, in, in deep, deep agony, deep spiritual agony this rich man is in. Uh, here, here's the thing about the difference between heaven and hell. You know, you know we have this misconception. It's good to, to, to fear going to hell because, you know, I'm going to be burned by the fires or something like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a good reason. But, you know, I think there's more reason even beyond that. You know, the, the hell that Jesus talks about here is an unquenchable agony of the tongue. He, in other places, he says like a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Like he, he's, he's talking about this, this, this regret. So it's a, it's a deep place of, of agony and, and regret. Think about that. Have you ever had something you were in deep agony and regret about? And, and, and then you were at your, your, your most despaired, most depressed moment. And then not only that, it was completely hopeless that, that I'm going to get out of that. It, it's, a, it's a very deep pain that cannot be fixed. It has no hope of being fixed. And then this kind of agony forever. In eternity. This is hell. You know, you know really think about this. I mean, physical, you know, physical pain. I mean, is, is it really physical pain that we should be fearful of here? You know, my, my, my uncle, when I was very young, 25 years ago, he was, he was in a house fire, like, stuck in the house, you know, pulled by the firemen out of the house. And then he had burns all over his body. He was in the hospital for weeks. I, I visited him in the hospital. Uh, back then, they had chicken skin. They put chicken skin all over his body uh, to repair, you know, the burns. But, you know, eventually he did heal. I look at him now, no, no scars. He, he looks normal. Uh, a few years later, he got married. Uh, he, he got married and then he, uh, he, had, a, he had a kid. Uh, if I go visit him now, he's, he's doing pretty well for himself. He's, he's got a nice job. He's, he's doing well for himself. I think about that physical pain well, can be healed. No, but really, you know, what we're talking about when Jesus talks about this hell, yeah, this agony and regret and despair, this, this, this pain that has no hope, no hope, this hopelessness. This is much harder to heal. You know, we live in a rich country. Uh, but this rich country also has a lot of agony in it. You know, people in complete despair and hopelessness. There's something called the, the uh, opioids. Uh, opioids, uh, these are um, pain-killing drugs, pain-killing drugs. Uh, you know, if you read the news, you, you know, I mean, the opioid epidemic in this country. There's so many people addicted to, to numbing pain. It's more than just about numbing physical pain, too. You know, a lot of people become addicted to it, and any, any and all types of pain, they, they want to, to try to heal it. And they be, become uh, addicted, 
addicted to this drug and so uh, they, they take too much of it. And then when you take too much of a drug, then you overdose and you die, of course. You know, the statistics are in this country that 130 people every day die from opioid overdose. So, I mean, even during the sermon, I mean, it's true. I mean, this is how bad it is. Even during this sermon, there are tens of people that die from opioid overdose like this. You know, people are, are so addicted that they have to make these drugs even stronger. And there's this one drug called fentanyl. It's completely invented by people, by man. It's not natural at all. But they invented it because it was used for extreme type pain. That other drugs weren't enough to, to numb that pain. So they had to, to invent something that can, can numb it even more. Uh, yeah, this same drug uh, you know, causes so much extreme pain to others when loved, peop- loved ones are lost to overdose. You know, if you ask me, uh, what's the closest comparison to hell? You know, I, I think about the, the hopeless agony of this opioid epidemic. You know, hell is such a, a deep pain that you know, this rich man, he doesn't want anybody else to experience this pain. And, you know, when I, think about, when I think about that, I think, you know, maybe dead people have a, a heavier burden for Christ and preaching about Jesus than even we do. You know, there's a, a pastor, his name is David Dykes. Uh, it's a quote from him. If God gave me the option of letting every member of our church spend 30 seconds in heaven or 30 seconds in hell, I would ask God to let all of us spend just 30 seconds in hell. Because those of us who know the Lord will spend eternity in heaven. But I think the 30 seconds in hell would change our lives forever. And of course, uh, you know, we don't want to and we cannot spend 30 seconds uh, in hell while we're here. Uh, but we should try to learn from hell. This is why I'm preaching this message today. While we still have a chance, don't regret it for eternity. Repent of your sin, testify that Jesus Christ is Lord, and have faith. It's all it takes to go to heaven. But even though it's so simple, so many people still don't believe for whatever reason. Satan uh, invades the mind. The situation of the world blocks so many people from accepting Jesus Christ for whatever reason. And some people just just wait and wait and wait. You know, think I maybe I still have time later in my life. But do we really have time later? 
uh, I think about that. You guys know in the news, right? I mean, the past uh, few weeks, two airplanes crashed. I mean, just, just like that, 150 people in, in each plane or more, or whatever the number is. You know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, of course, if we knew what was going to happen tomorrow, maybe we would change. But we can't. So we often don't change. What is today's message and what is Jesus trying to tell us? Jesus is telling us that hell is real and you don't want to be there. And you, you know, in faith, you know, and in sermon, you know, sometimes you think, oh, we should tell good and happy messages and great stories. Oh, miracles that Jesus performs. Well, but why teach about hell? Is that the agony and regret and despair and hopelessness of hell? It should be convincing enough to us to believe in Jesus one day sooner and tell other people that they need to believe in Jesus one day sooner. You know, Abraham says, you have the Moses and the prophets to tell you, to, to they, the brothers, to tell them to have faith in God. You know, it's true uh, what Abraham says. Who do people have today? They have Moses, the prophets, and they have all of us as well also. And so, you know, today's message is also for the disciples listening to this message. For all of us believing in Jesus and building God's kingdom together. You know, the eternal agony and regret of hell puts in focus to us to preach God's kingdom and for the kingdom to come one day sooner. And, and, and it's a message that says we don't, we don't want any regrets in this life. You know, people, you know, they, they, they write a list of things they want to do before they die. You know, I need to go to this place, eat this food, and jump out of a plane. <laughs> and they write this kind of list so they don't have regret. But, you know, how about people of faith? You know, or, or a list of things so that we don't have regret? Uh, we have one thing. It's to build God's kingdom. One day sooner. So really today as we reflect on today's message, I hope we can know eternity. And while we are on earth, still look to God and Jesus Christ. With our tongues, let us repent and testify that Jesus is Lord. And have faith in God. Jesus taught us the truth, and he taught us about hell for our sake. So let's live without agony and regret on earth and build the God's kingdom one day sooner. Uh, this is my wish for my hope for all of us uh, on this 40 day walk towards Easter uh, let's be the ones that can walk this path of Lent with the earnest and earnestness and sincerity of eternity uh,
Let's pray. Uh, Father God, we thank you. Uh, Lord, uh, truly we thank you for all that you are and your grace in our life, Lord. And uh, we wish to have the faith to look up to you and beyond. To wish for eternity and the grace that comes from above. For Lord, we are helpless in ourselves and in our sin. But in Jesus Christ, we are saved. And so, Lord, with our tongues, uh, we wish to repent and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Lord, let us not live with an agony and a hopeless despair in our life. But uh, let us live with the hope that only comes from your kingdom, Lord. And on, while we are still here on this earth, uh, let us live without regret and with all our lives and with everything in our souls, let us work and build the kingdom. Lord, uh, this Lent, uh, we wish to be sincere and earnest. Look towards heavens and the eternity. In Jesus Christ's name I prayed. Amen.